So depending on how long you have been using Flutterflow for, you may have come across the term callbacks and not quite understood exactly what they actually are. So in this particular video, I'll kind of demystify it a little bit and I'll show you some examples to how you can apply that in your own project. So I've got three in this particular uh, sort of sample here. You may have been following some previous videos where we were building this custom navigation bar component with inside Flutterflow. Um, in a later video, I kind of added this little plus option in here, which of course does actually use a callback in that particular video. So I'll touch upon it in here as well. So you can see here that how that's used. I've also got a callback kit that's being used on this little avatar icon just up here. But the real kind of, um, important point that I want to kind of uh, hone in on is this the this use of uh, callbacks that's actually used for inside this particular list view now I've got some data that's coming down from Superbase and what I'm doing is I'm actually deleting a photo and but what I want to do is I want to use the power of callbacks to actually refresh the page once I've actually deleted that particular photo now bear in mind that that delete button is actually with inside the actual component itself but of course if I delete the record of inside the actual component you can guess what's going to happen i'm not going to see an automatic refresh of the list view with inside flutter flow so i'll show you how to solve that particular problem so without further ado let's get into the video and let's have a look at some of these examples Okay, so in this first example, it's as simple as it comes. Now, this could be any component that you actually have yourself in your project. And I'm just going to use this a profile image component that I've got up here just to demonstrate here the use of a callback. So what I've got here is I've got this little component here that's got a, kind of got this profile image here of the user. It's got this little red dot. Now, this little red dot might, for example, represent that this user has a notification waiting for them. So what I'm going to do here here is I'm when I actually click on this face here then what's going to happen is with inside the component itself it's just going to play out the animation just to remove that red dot from display it won't actually carry out the database activity that would perhaps indicate to the database okay that user has now cleared down all their notifications and that's where I can actually use a, a callback to actually execute some actions that I've actually got set up that could be played out once that actually happens with inside the component so if that doesn't sound particularly clear don't worry I'll walk you through it but if I just click on this now you can see that animation is now played out it's not actually carrying out anything obviously with inside the database so let's go over to Flutterflow now let's just see how we can make this change where we can then say right once the animation has completed inside the component now go and carry out what I want you to do outside of the actual component itself let's walk through that Okay, so then back over to the widget tree with inside of Flutterflow, you can see here I've got the home page selected. And at the top right here, I've just got this component, as you can see, it's represented just down here in this sort of title row. If I just um, go to that profile image component, you can see here it's super, super simple. Um, I've got like this profile image here itself. That's the actual image of the user itself. And then I've got this little notification container, which represents that, but that red dot. Now I've got animation set up here. And what's gonna happen is, is this actual profile circle image when I actually click on it, if I show you here on the Action Flow Editor, when I actually click on it, it's gonna play out the notification container animation. So super simple, it will just play out and it will just actually disappear. That's great. Now with inside the a profile a circle mouse region that I just kind of got set uh, on the on the kind of the surround of the profile image, all that's really doing is if I just actually go to the action flow editor, you can see here on the mouse enter, I'm playing a widget animation, which is kind of just rotating it. And when I actually exit, then what I'm doing is I'm just carrying out the reverse of that info animation that just returns the user back. So really, really simple stuff. It's just a simple setup with inside Flutterflow itself. Now, of course, what we want to actually do is, though, is when the actual user actually clicks on that profile circle image, we actually want to execute some code that's or some certainly some actions that are have been defined with inside the actual parent page itself. Now, how do we do that? Well, firstly, with inside the profile image component, you can see here I've got some parameters. Now, I've got this one called on tap profile action. And all I've done is I've just gone to the add parameter. I put in the name here and I've gone to the type. I've gone right down and I've selected action. That's all I need to have done. So that, of course, is the on tap profile action. 
Okay, that's that is what it is at this moment. So how do we then cause this? How do we actually then perform this callback back to our parent page? Well, quite simple really. All we need to do is go over to the profile circle image, go to the action flow editor. So I'm going to play this little animation. So that's the removal of that red dot, and I'm going to click the little plus here. I'm going to add an action, and I'm going to select utilities, and I'm going to move down to this one called execute callback. So select that. My callback is going to be the only one that I've actually got specified as a component parameter. I choose on tap profile action and that's it. So what's going to happen is the animation is going to play out. That red dot is going to disappear and then it's going to execute this callback, which has been specified here. OK, great. Brilliant. That's it. That's all done. That's the component um, and that's all that it needs to do. So what does that look like on the home page? Well, if I go to the actual home page itself and I go to the actual uh, components, if I just choose the profile image component, you can see here that because I've got that component parameter set up as an action, you can see here now we've got this very familiar action flow editor that is just down here. So of course, remember, this is on the actual page itself. So I'm just going to choose the open and here here we are now with inside this particular callback. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, in my simple example, I'm just going to set some uh, app state to indicate that the actual notification has now been suppressed from the user. So here I can go to add action and I'm going to go to and just type in state here. Just say update app state. I'm going to say add fields here and I'm going to say has notification and I'm just going to set that to false that's it but the great thing about this is not only is this now performing this app state update what i can now do is of course i can now navigate the user to the actual page now typically what happen is is normally you would navigate to a profile page or something like that so of course i could just choose navigate to and i'm going to choose the actual profile page here that's all that I need to do and that's done. So I can just take that off there. So that's it. So of course, if I now run this now, if I just do a reload, so I can now hit the actual icon here and there it is. So what would have now happened, of course, if I go back to the home page, you can see now that little notification indica indicator has now disappeared. And of course, I then was moved out to the profile page. So that is just a very, very simple example of using a callback on the actual home page where you can make action actions available to then be carried out once the activity with inside the component has actually been uh, executed. As simple as that. Let's move on to the second example. Now, in example number two, then I'm just going to recap something that I covered previously in one of my videos where we built this wonderful bottom navigation component here. Please go and check out the videos there on how to build that. It's completely native a flutter flow component that's being built. It gives you just a very nice customized bottom navigation bar instead of using the boring old sort of out of the box flutter component that kind of sits with inside flutter flow so um with this particular example what i've got here is i've got this little plus button here now of course this particular navigation component can actually sit within a multi sort of multiple places with inside each of these pages you can see that it's being applied to every single page but of course with inside the notes page itself this button is actually available if i click on the actual button navigation component you can see that i've got the show central button takes us the only page Page inside this example that actually has the little plus on now of course with inside this page itself we might want to actually do something with inside it we might want to show uh, another component or we might want to show like a bottom bar or something like that on the user actually hitting the plus button so a bit like what a fab button might do with inside Flutterflow itself so of course here we've got this on tap central button here we've got the action flow editor now what I can do is I can now uh, sort of define the actions that I would like to execute whenever the user presses that plus button on this particular page and of course that is all set up with inside the component itself so if I just go within the bottom navigation component if I just scroll down here we've got this action on the actual button itself if I just click open the action flow editor you can see we've got this execute callback which is calling back on a, a, a component parameter called on tap uh, sort of central button so again very very similar to the profile image one that you saw earlier on and it's set up in, in in a very very similar way so of course going back to the notes page here I can go down to the navigation component I can go to the action flow editor add action let's just uh, show here some information dialog box I'm just gonna say test here and I'm just gonna say hello here say close that's all good if I go back to test mode hit reload Okay, so I go down to the notes here. Here's a little plus has appeared. Hit the little plus, 
and Bob, your uncle, there it is, test hello. So really simple. So as you can see here, this allows you to really be able to customize each and every one of your pages that would like to utilize the little plus by setting the actions as a component parameter. So that's example number two. Let's get to example number three now, because this is something that I'm sure you'll find really, really useful if you're using Superbase with inside your project. So let's go and have a look at that now. Okay, so here we are then with example number three. Now, if you are a super base user, I'm sure you'll find this particularly useful. So on screen at the moment, what I've got here is I've got some rows coming down from a super base database, just from a table with a number of photos. And I show you what that looks like here. Here's the table itself. It's just got three rows in there. There's some images on a photo URL, and I've got this archived indicator, which I'm basically filtering on. So all the time that it's false, I'm showing the images within inside the list view. As soon as I set them to true, then that image then is then removed from the uh, from the UI. So that's great. That's all very good. So that's what happens. And the way that actually works is that I just go with inside the component. I've got these three dots here. I just select that and I just choose this option for delete photo. So as I said, it's not actually deleting the photo. It's just updating the super base row to the archive indicator as being true. So what will happen is if I hit this little delete photo option now, then what's going to happen is that photo is going to be deleted. Now, what you're seeing on screen at the moment is an animation playing out where the image has now disappeared. But the problem now comes in, of course, is that the list view hasn't been updated. That's because what's going to happen is, is the component has worked independently. It's done the deletion, but it but the, the actual home page doesn't have any, uh, hasn't had any indication to, to actually carry out a database refresh. Now, that's where the power of callback come in so let me show you how that works if I just get the application back to the correct state if I just set this back to false here you'll see now that that picture will come back into display let's go back over to Flutterflow and let's now just walk through how that actual component works so here we are back in Flutterflow. I'm just going to go to the image select component here. Here it is. And you can see here I've got this delete photo option. As you can see here, it's got an action apply to it here. If I click on the action flow editor, you can see here now this is the widget animation. I'm just playing out this animation where it just sort of fades out. So that's why you had that big white block. Then I'm doing the update of the super base row where I'm just setting the archive indicator to true. That's good. That all works. And here I am now being in a position to execute that callback. So I've got this component parameter with inside this image select component called on tap delete action. So this is just executing that. Now the magic comes in, of course, is that execution is going to happen because that image is now being deleted. But on the actual home page itself, this is where I now need to tell the page to actually refresh, is to actually refresh the actual list view. So if I go to the actual uh, the image select component here, and I just move down on the right hand side, you can see I've got this on tap delete action. So if I click the open here, I'm going to add the action, and all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go down to database here, just do a search for that, and I've got this refresh database request. I just select that. I just select my actual list view, which is the page content column. And that is all that I need to do. If I now close that, if I do an instant reload here, if I just reload the uh, application. Okay, so we come back, we now just delete the actual photo itself. And there it is. Perfect. So you can see now the database refresh is happening now on the callback back to the actual home page itself. So that's one really, really simple technique of um, with inside Superbase where you can actually then refresh the list view itself. And um, of course, if you're using Firebase, then or because of the real time nature of Firebase, then generally you'll find that actually by deleting records from Firebase, you'll see them instantly reflective inside the UI. But of course, inside Superbase, you don't actually have that luxury. So I hope you've found this video useful on using callbacks with inside your own application of course if you've been scratching your head a little bit on this particular problem with Superbase then hopefully you found that useful so uh, until the next video I'll see you soon